Hello everyone, this is Ankit Jain. I welcome you all to my channel Take Journey with Ankit. This is part 3 of our Salesforce Connect series. In the previous parts, we have discussed what is Salesforce Connect, what is external objects, how to set up the relationships between the external objects, how to set up the relationship between the Salesforce object as well as external object. Moreover, in the last part, we also discussed how you can integrate the two different systems using the Salesforce Connect by using the cross org adapter. In this session, we will talk about how you can integrate with the external system. That external system can be your SAP system or that external system can be your Microsoft system, right? How you can integrate with those systems and fetch that data using another Salesforce Connect adapter that is nothing but an OData adapter. So that's what we have to explore in today's session, how you can integrate with the external system using the OData adapter. So before we go and try to understand what is OData adapter, let's try to understand what is actually an OData. OData, nothing but an open data protocol. Again, I'm repeating, OData stands for the open data protocol. It is a REST based protocol. It is a REST based protocol with the help of which you can interact with the external database via the RESTful services. With the help of this protocol, you can interact with the RESTful interfaces and you can fetch the data from the from their databases. Again, it is more flexible than all the other REST web services that are available. The reason being this O data, it provides a kind of a uniform way how you can describe the data as well as how you can describe the data model. Basically with the OData, we do have our metadata file. In that metadata file, we go and define what will be the primary key, what will be the rule to get the primary key, what, in what way your data will be coming in or in what way you want to go and define your data model. All those things we don't have to bother about just for your understanding. It's good to know that OData means nothing but an open data protocol. It is a REST based protocol. It is built on the technologies like your HTTP, ITEM, XML or the JSON. Like most of the REST services are built on the XML as well as on the JSON. It is again nothing different. It also uses the both XML as well as the JSON. And the key point about the OData only is it provides a uniform way to describe the data as well as the data model. Now the question comes, we have understand the OData. What is OData adapter? Under the Salesforce Connect in the first part, I have highlighted that there are a lot of out of the box adapters that Salesforce is providing with the help of which we can go and integrate with the external system. In the last part, we have integrated with the cross org adapter with another Salesforce org. Now, there's another adapter that is OData adapter. This adapter is very frequently used whenever uh, the business wants to integrate with the SAP system or with the Microsoft SharePoint because the databases are designed on the SAP as well as on the Microsoft SharePoint are using the OData service. And as they are using the OData service with the help of OData adapters, you can connect to their offline, of, you can connect to their applications and virtually access that data into your org. Again, whenever we talked about the Salesforce Connect, basically we are not copying the data from the external system inside our org. What we are doing here is a kind of a data virtualization where virtually we are seeing the data which is available in the external system inside our org. There are different versions of OData that are available. We do have the OData 2.0, OData 4.0 or OData 4.01 adapter. So based on the version of the external system that you are connecting accordingly you can go and choose the type of an OData adapter and integrate with that system again how to integrate it how to uh, get the external data inside your Salesforce system I will come back to that in the upcoming slides right next point here is the lightning platform interact with the external data via the external object as i highlighted whenever we are using the salesforce connect or wherever we are making any data virtualization in the previous session we always interact with the external data again with the help of external object so what the salesforce connect will do here salesforce connect will convert each of those interactions into the o data query so whenever salesforce is sending any instruction to the o data service the language that they are using here to communicate is referred as the O data query. In this O data query, Salesforce will send the, all the relevant parameters to filter up the result. For example, let's say you are on the list view and on the list view, you have to see the order details that are present on the SAP system. Again, 
at the back end what the salesforce connect will do salesforce connect will send that interaction using the old data query to the sap system get the relevant data for you and put it on the salesforce again it does on a snap so you do not have to bother about the performance or all the other stuff again what all different things that you can do with the old data external objects most of the things that you can do with the custom objects are also possible to do with the old data external objects as well like you can create the tab for that external object you can view the complete record detail page on that external object they can uh, perform the global search on that external object for example let's say you are on one record let's say you are on the order record and you want to see the related records for example the related records are the order details you can also see the child records as well and that is possible by setting up the relationships between the external objects how to set up the relationships i have already covered in the previous session again what all other things that you can do based on the access that you do have while connecting to the o data uh, database you can perform the create operation edit operation and delete operation you can do all those stuff from the salesforce org without even leaving your org so for example from the salesforce org you can directly modify the data what is available on the sap system or on the microsoft powerpoint based on your access in addition to that you can also use that data to run the reports as well moreover you can also use the external objects via the flows process apis apex soql as well as you can run the sosl queries too one key thing that you should know here is you cannot write down the triggers on the o data external object again i am repeating one limitation that you should know about the o data external object is you cannot write down the triggers on the o data external object but apart from that you can use them in the flows in your processes in your apis apex soql as well as on the sosl queries too next slide i have put a kind of a quick revision about the external objects relationship because it is very important for our upcoming demo as well so there are multiple types of relationships that you can set up with the external object definitely you cannot go here for the lookup relationship but you do have the two advanced form of lookup relationships here one is the external lookup and second one here is the indirect lookup external lookup you will go whenever you want to associate the two external objects right for example there are two external objects that you are getting from the sap system like the order or the order details and you want to set up the relationships between them then you should go for the external lookup similarly if you wants to set up the relationships in between the salesforce object as well as the external object for example at the account level you wants to see all the related orders account is a salesforce standard object and here the order i am referring the sap orders right then in such scenarios you will go and set up the indirect lookup relationship so you do have the two types of relationships one is referred as the external lookup and second one is referred as the indirect lookup external lookup it is used to set up the relationships between the two external objects and the indirect lookup it is used to set up the relationships between the external object as well as the salesforce object now coming to the demo part so i have put the different use cases that we can explore under this demo in the first use case what we will be doing here is we will be integrating with the o data service it's a public o data service that is available on the web with the help of this o data service we will be fetching the different objects like the order order detail and the customer external object so this is the web service i will also put the link of this web service in the video description as well so you can check out from there so you can see that this is the web service that i do have this is the web service uh, which is based on the o data okay this is the web service which is based on the o data again in this web service you can see that there are different types of tables are available so here we do have the tables as orders we do have the table as order details and all those stuff so what we will do we will get those data of those web service inside our org and after that we will set up the relationships between them so how to do that to do that the first thing that you have to do here is you have to go and create the external data source we have also already covered that in our last session as well so again i am repeating the same step whenever you have to integrate with any external system and get those records or get those external objects inside the salesforce org in the form of external object then you have to go and first create the data source for it so here i am coming 
to the external data source and creating the new external data source. Again, this is the URL that you have to pass to integrate with that external data source. Let's say I'm giving this external data source name as a Northwind. You can give any name, it's completely up to you. So here I am giving the name here as the Northwind. And here you will make that decision what kind of Salesforce Connect adapter that you have to use. Whether you have to use the OData 2.0, 4.0 or OData 4.0.1. Right? I have already read the documentation for this and as per the documentation, here we have to go for the OData 2.0. Oh, so here I am selecting the OData 2.0. This is a public URL, so no authentication is required. Only thing that we have to specify here is the URL. Only thing that we have to specify here is the URL. Next thing here is the format. This data service, it deals in the JSON format. So I am changing the format here as JSON and clicking on Save. So we have created one external data source. Now next thing that we have to do here is we have to go and fetch the external objects. After you have created the external data source with the name of Northwind, here I go and fetch the external objects. So for that I am clicking on the validate and the sync button. Now here you can see that all these objects are coming up here. Whatever the objects that we have specified in the URL, all these objects are coming up here. Based on the use case that we have discussed, I need the orders, I need the order detail. And for my better understanding to understand these are the external things, what I am doing here is, here I am changing the API name as well as the label and I am appending them with the external underscore. Okay, So that I can easily understand they are the external objects. So here I am appending with the external, here also I do the same thing, I am appending everything with the external underscore. Right, a few more objects that I need to fetch here, one is the customer as well. So here I go and again append the customers with the external customer. Right, so these are the three objects that I need to fetch based on your requirement. You can fetch any additional objects as well. For example, here I go and fetch one more additional object as a product too. Right, so based on your requirement, you can fetch all the objects or you can fetch the selected objects as well. So here I go and fetch the selected object, checking this checkbox sync in the background, but otherwise it will hold me unless and until everything got synced. So generally take some time based on the number of records that you do have. If you are checking this checkbox, basically it will be running in the asynchronous job queue. And here I go and click on the sync button. Here you will see that one of the job is running. Right? And here the job is fetching all these records. You can go here and refresh the job in case there are any errors, you will see those errors here. You can see that all the records has been fetched and the status here is coming up as complete. Now the next thing that we will do here is, you can, if you navigate to the external objects, you will see that the external objects that we have fetched. Key thing about the external object that I already highlighted in my previous session as well. The external objects always ends with the underscore underscore X. External objects always ends with the underscore underscore X. Another key point here is by default the deployment status here is in development. This is specifically you have to take into consideration whenever you are doing the deployment into the production. You have to make sure that you are changing the status here as the deployed. But for the day or it's not required so I'm keeping it like that for now. The next thing that we will do here is we will go and create the tab here so that we can access those external objects in my org. So here I go and create the tab. I'm clicking on new and here under if I go here you can see that all these four external objects are available. So for the time being I'm creating the tab only for two. One is the order and second is the order detail. So here I go and create the tab for the external order. I'm keeping everything as default. It's more like the admin stuff that we do of creating a tab. There is nothing different here. So I'm making it default on for everyone clicking on next, including the tab. I'm in only including the tab here on the sales application or let me go and add this tab on all the apps doesn't matter so 
So let me go and do that. Same thing, I'm doing it for the one more object here that is the order details. So here I go and doing that for the order detail as well. Selecting the any any icon that you want to select, clicking on next, again making it on for everyone, clicking on next, making it on for everyone and clicking on save. Right, so I have created the tabs for both of them. Now here if you go and try to navigate to the order as well as the order details, you will see those things. For example, here I am opening the external orders and also I am opening the external order details as well. You will see that whatever the data that is available on that O data service will be accessible in our org. And one key thing to note here is here we have not done a single line of a code. So you can see that how adapter this, how much these adapters are helpful whenever you just want to virtually see the records without writing the single line of a code. You can see all those data is coming up here from those external objects. All these data is coming up here from those external objects. Now here you can go and do all those stuff that you do in the Salesforce. You can go and create the view for them. You can arrange the lightning pages for them, right? You can do all those stuff here. So I do have the external orders as well as the external order detail. If you go and open any of this record, here you will see that the complete details about that order here. Complete details about that order here. Now, the next thing that we have to do here is, the next thing that we have to do here is, uh, okay, let me go to the use case. I believe that use case will cover it. What we have to do here is on the external order, we have to go and display the external order details, right? So there are few orders uh, which uh, which have the order details. For example, if I talk about 10248, this is my external order number and these are the different details of that external order, 11, 42 and 72. But here I want to see those under the related record so that I can understand what all the different detailed records available for that order. Again, directly I cannot do it because there is no relationships is available in my Salesforce org. So what I have to do here is I need to go and do the set up the relationships between the order as well as the order detail. Now again, again, external order as well as the external order detail. They do have what kind of a relationship as both are external objects. They do have the external lookup relationship. So what we have to do here is we have to set up the relationships on in between the order as well as the order detail object and for that again I am navigating here to the external objects to define the relationship. So here I go to the external objects. Order detail is my child object so here I am navigating to my child object external order detail and here I will go and define that relationship. I already have one field available here that is the order ID. What I need to do here is I need to change the data type of this field. So to do that, I am clicking on the edit button and changing the data type of this field from text to the external lookup relationship. So here I am making it as an external lookup relationship, clicking on next. This is related to the external order. So I'm selecting that object and clicking on next. I'm keeping everything as default, clicking on next. Okay, the length I need to specify as this is the relationship. So let me go and specify the 20 as the length. It's up to you, you can specify any length. Let me go here, click on next. I'm giving the access to everyone and clicking on save. Right, I'm giving the access to everyone and here I go and clicked on save. Now the relationship is available there. For example, here if I go and open this page. Let's go and see whether the relationship is coming up or not. Here you can see that my relationship is coming up here. So from here I can navigate to my external order. Now only thing I need to do here is I need to modify the external order details and I put the related list uh, in the page layout. So again to do that I am navigating here to the external object. This time I am going to the external order and modify the page layout for that. So if I scroll down here, I do have the option to modify the page layout. So here I go and click on edit. Navigating to the related list, adding the 
related list for the external orders so here i go and do that now i have put my uh, i have put my related list here let's go here and click on save let's go and refresh this page to check whether we can see the related order details on the order record or not If I go here, click on related, here you can see that I'm able to access all the related order details for this order. I'm able to access all the related order details for this order. Okay, so this is how you will go and set up the external relationships between the two external objects. Now moving to the another use case, what we have to do here is here we have to display the external orders on the salesforce account so salesforce account is the salesforce account object record external order it is an external object and we have to set the relationship between them based on the customer id we have to set that relationship in between them based on the customer id so on the order field we do have this customer id based on which we have to go and set up the relationship if you folks recall in the first session when we discussed about the external relationship i highlighted that whenever we have to set any indirect lookup relationship between the external objects as well as the salesforce object we always do that based on the unique key so what we have to do here is on the salesforce object we have to go and create the unique key and based on that unique key only we can set up that relationship so to do that i am navigating to the object manager here and creating one unique field on my object so here i go and navigate to the fields and relationship clicking on new if you want you can also use any existing field as well uh, but here i prefer to go and create the new field so here i'm still creating the new field moving the moving that as a text navigating to the field label uh, let me put that here as an external customer id uh, the length I am giving up here again as 20. Again, I have to make sure that that field is unique. That is the kind of a prerequisite whenever you want to use the field for the indirect lookup. And also that field must be set as an external ID. If you are not setting these flags, then your field will not able to set the external lookup relationship. So make sure that you are selecting the unique flag and also you are selecting the external ID flag here and then click on next. Again, I'm giving the access to everyone for now as I'm on the day work doesn't matter for me. So here I go and click on save. Right now. We have to set the relationships in between the external object as well as the Salesforce object prerequisite we have taken care by creating the field on the account object. Now the next thing that we will do here is uh, we will go and create a few external objects here. We will navigate to the external object and create the relationship. So again I am going to the external order because external order is going to be my child record. That's why I am going here for the external order and customer ID is the field that we have to use. Again, I'm changing the data type for this field as an indirect lookup this time because I need to set up the relationship with the Salesforce object. That is the reason here I'm navigating for the indirect lookup relationship. Clicking on next, I'm relating this to the account object. Here I'm only getting the account because account is the only object in my org which have the external ID field. That is the reason I'm only getting the account. Clicking on next. Here under the target field, I am getting my external customer ID field because this is the only field which is marked as an external ID with the unique identifier. And after that, here I go and click on next. Clicking on keeping everything as a by default, clicking on next. Extending the access to everyone and clicking on next. And clicking on save. And clicking on save right so these are the things that i have done here i have converted this into the indirect lookup relationship now let's go and set some set up some data because this is the new field that we have created so let's go and set up some data for the accounts 
this is generally we do with the help of data loader as a one time activity but uh, as we are testing here for the few of the record i am manually doing it so let me go and add that field on my filter so let me go and put the edit list filter and add that sorry let me go and select the fields to display and here i am adding the field as an external customer id let me move this field up after the account name click on save and here i go and populate that field value as a vignette you cannot use the same value again and again because you have already marked this field as a unique so let me go here and click on save so now what we are expecting here is what all the different orders available for this customer it should show up under this account let me go here under the related list that related list should come up okay it, it is not coming up so again we have to go and modify the page layout okay no it is coming up here you can see that we are getting all these external orders here right what are all the external orders like the 10248 whatever the external orders available for the for that customer if i go and open up here you can see that whatever the external orders are available for that customer we are getting all those external orders here so this is how folks you can set up the relationships in between the external object as well as the salesforce object i hope you got the understanding about what is odata what is odata adapters and with the multiple use cases how you can access the odata service and how you can set up the relationships between the external objects that you are getting we also discussed about the different things that we can do with the odata external object this is the assignment that i do have for you folks what you have to do here is you have to fetch the external products from the odata service and create the tab for that external products after that you have to set up the relationship between the external order detail as well as the external products right if you are finishing this assignment let me know in the comment section what kind of relationships that you have set here in between the external order details as well as the external products definitely in case you do have any queries any questions like always you can post that in the comment section as well that's all i do have folks for this session i hope you folks like this session found this session helpful and got some new learning from this session as well thank you have a good time